Tailwind. Every developer has an opinion on it. Some think that using it is devilish. While with others, including me, it's a love story. Hello and welcome to the Tailwind CSS Framework tutorial. If you're a web developer looking to streamline your workflow and improve the design of your projects, then Tailwind is worth checking out. In this video, we'll cover what Tailwind is, how it differs from other CSS frameworks, and how to use it to build the layout and user interfaces. The installation and examples will target React, but the main concepts apply to other frameworks as well. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a good understanding of how to use Tailwind to your advantage to build responsive web applications. So let's get started. What is Tailwind? Tailwind is a CSS framework that provides a set of utility classes for building web layout and user interfaces. And like other CSS framework like Bootstrap and Design Material UI that come with predefined style for common UI elements such as buttons, inputs, cards, grids, Tailwind allow you to build your own style from scratch using a set of low-level utility classes. What it means is simply it's not a component library. It's just another way to style your project. So the first question you should ask yourself is, is the design I need to build a very custom Custom with a custom design system. If no, maybe go with the component library like the one I mentioned before, so you can iterate from it and have ready-to-use components. If yes, customizing the provided components can sometimes become painful. You can certainly feel you are fighting against predefined styles that may not fit your style, while those libraries take strong decisions on the way you style your project. So if you want to go from scratch, you have multiple solutions. Plain CSS, SAS, Emotion and Style Components. Those have in common the fact that you actually need to write some CSS code. While with Tailwind CSS, it's a functional approach where you're using utility class names and avoid naming issue on the lifetime of your project. Of course, you have a configuration file to update those classes. This means that you have the complete control over the appearance of your project. Let's start by setting up a React project with Tailwind. Installation. Let's create our project folder and let's install Tailwind dependencies. Then use Tailwind CLI to init Tailwind on the project. It will generate a Tailwind and PostGSS configuration files. On Tailwind configuration file, we'll add index.html and the file extension we want to use Tailwind on, so JS and JSX for React and TS, TSX for TypeScript. We can now replace all default style in index.css to the followings and remove app.css and its use in app.jsx as we won't use it. Now we should be able to use Tailwind classes. Text center to center the text, text 3xl to make it big, font bold underline and p-4 to add padding. Don't worry, we'll explain it later, it's just to check if it works. By the way, you can see that I have autocompletion while writing code and the text color is previewed. To have the same thing on your editor, you just need to go to extensions, search for IntelliSense and install it. Okay, now we can run npm run dev and we can see our hello world has some styling on it. Basics. So how does Tailwind work? Tailwind provides a set of utility classes that you can change to style your HTML element. Each class is responsible for specific style properties such as font size, color, or padding. For example, to make our element big, we use Take3XL class to the element. Let's create a basic review card about Tailwind. We'll use a figure, inside an image, a block code. Tailwind is my go-to CSS framework for building web and mobile applications and the fig caption to act as the legend of our figure with two texts. The author name, Wawa Sensei, and my fake title, your favorite developer on YouTube. So here is how it looks. Let's try adding some padding and a background color on the page first. Now on our card, we want to define its color to white and add some border radius, MD for a medium intensity. The image on the top left corner isn't rounded because it overflows from the parent, so add overflow hidden. Let's define its size with W-48 and H-48. To display the text on the right, let's add flex and max width 2XL to avoid it being too big. Now let's focus on the right part. We'll add some horizontal padding with PX8 and a vertical padding with PY6. To separate the code from the legend, we add space Y3. 
But now the image overlaps, so we'll remove edge 48 and use edge auto. And to avoid stretching the image, we'll use object cover. On the coat, we can add text long, font medium, italic to have bigger, thicker, and italic text. For the author, let's set a semi bold and blue color and a gray color for the title. Now let's have a look on how it display on smaller screens. Well, it's still usable, but we can do way better and Tailwind made it simple. Responsive. When we add classes the way we did until now, it applies to all resolutions. Tailwind provides class prefixes to make it applied only when it reaches a minimum viewport width. It's a mobile first approach and I usually start with the desktop version, but don't worry, it's not a big deal, you can start the way you prefer. Let's say we want a different layout on mobile with a rounded picture on top of the text. So we'll say the dimensions we chose for the image are only applied starting from medium sized devices, usually tablet portrait. We add MD, double dot, and the prefix. And to have our mobile style, we just add the class names without prefix. We also want it to be rounded, so we add rounded full, but it will apply to larger size. So to cancel it, we can add MD rounded known. If you get it, you already know almost everything you need to know to make your design responsive using Tailwind. We say we want the picture on top of the text, so let's cancel the flex on the container. Let's center the image and let's add some top space, but don't forget to cancel it on larger device. Let's also center the text with text center and cancel it on larger device. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the mobile and desktop look. Now let's see how we can customize Tailwind. Before going to the next part, let's have a small break. If until now you you think the video is helpful, please hit the like button to make this tutorial more visible to other developers. Configuration You can customize the values for each utility class by modifying the configuration file for your project and adding custom ones. Let's say you want to change the colors, but now it looks black, it's because we defined blue as a single color, so using text blue will fix it. But it's not the best way, if you want to easily switch to a brighter, darker color. You will need to generate the colors from 50 to 900, and luckily a tool exits to get all the variants from one color. Voila, it's generated and can copy paste it and now we can use the proper class name. Oh, by the way, we broke the other colors. To continue using the default colors, we need to import them in our config files and destructure them to add it to our new colors. Now let's customize the font. We need to add to font family the font it should use. So for sans serif I chose poppins and serif noto serif. I found them on Google Fonts. And don't forget to add the import statement you get from Google Fonts in your main CSS to load the fonts. Add it above Tailwind. Add the font serif to the block code as it's the only italic font I imported. Voila, here you have your own fonts and colors defined on your project. If you want to change it, it only happens in one single place, your configuration file. You can go further with the configuration to change the spacing, default values for margin, padding, and whatever you want. You can also add useful plugins, but it's a more advanced topic. You can go to the documentation if you want to know more about it. Tips and optimization. Here are some quick tips and advice to avoid being blocked at some point. Reusing styles. There's a whole article in the documentation about the topic that I recommend you read. Three things to remember. First, if you want to reuse something anywhere else in your project, don't automatically build a component for it. You can still make it later. Using an array and the map function is enough in a lot of cases. Second, multi-cursor addition might be the best solution. No shame. Third, if you are already good at structuring your code in components, maybe following atomic design principles, you should feel very comfortable with Tailwind. Let's talk about build size. Tailwind provides the just-in-time engine, which removes unused class in the final build. Last tip, when writing code, you might wonder how to order your class names, and working in team can become painful. I recommend you to use Prettier. Now when you save, the order of the class will follow the configured logic. Conclusion Tailwind can help you build professional looking layouts with minimal effort. The utility first approach allows you to focus on the structure and content of your project rather than on the aesthetics. Tailwind is easy to learn and use even if you don't have much experience in CSS. It is highly customizable so you can tailor the framework to fit your needs. And finally, the documentation is gold. I haven't covered all Tailwind features, but if you grasped the basics, you should easily go further 
with the documentation. By the way, if you want to practice or just find some inspiration, Tailwind provides both free and paying components you can use. It's available on tailwindui.com. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me in the comments if you want me to cover more advanced use of Tailwind. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. Thanks again, bye bye.